Good morning, folks. After last night's bombshell video, a number of you commented that I wouldn't have released that video last night if I wasn't ready to take another big swing here this morning. You guys are getting good at this. We're starting at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours on our star continues to bring the northern coronal hole through central heliographic longitudes. Bright active regions on the longitudes behind them, but considerably quiet. The coronal hole solar wind stream peaked yesterday amidst ongoing low-level geomagnetic storms, but both are calming back down this morning. Yesterday, based on the coronal holes, we began the earthquake watch on the heels of more than a week without any magnitude 6 events. We are one for one, and the alert does continue as Iceland rumbles are always volcanically concerning, and blood echoes have reached Central America as well. The next cold snap is here for the U.S. It was high 80s for me in the springs yesterday, and it will hit 30 tonight. Jet stream here, set to take on most of the country as it rolls through. Eyes open for another cold wave that comes with the western side of the stream bend. Let's go to the papers and begin in the deep. Phytoplankton, thought to be one of the more vulnerable pieces of the food chain under global warming, just doesn't care what we think. We've seen this before with krill, chlorophyll, and this is the third such report for phytoplankton. Their net productivity and numbers are up, up, up. And they also identify a key sign that the cold shift is about to begin. We have seen a tremendous change in the rate of sea ice loss, such that they can't tell if they had any extra open water or sunlight. But nevertheless, they are doing the opposite of what the climate model said they should do. Sounds exactly like last night's video. Up next, we've got another look at the specific European regions, and as with most of the rest of these we've seen, they are finding that the patterns and variability are caused by the sun and its decadal and centennial cycles. Taking that one step further up into the stratosphere where the sun is the unquestioned controller of the upper atmospheric climate, and realize that all the studies we've shown describing the need for better understanding of coupling down are indirectly discussing the sun. That's especially true because they identify the polar vortex as the key intermediary forcing agent, and its variation from seasonal normalcy is largely driven by the sun as well. Last but not least, more on cosmic rays and lightning. For veteran observers, this is probably the 15th or so confirmation of this in the last few years. It is scary because cosmic rays are at a modern maximum and expected to do nothing but go up over the next century. This is one of the easiest ways to understand that particle energy from space is more important than light when it comes to the variability of meteorological parameters and long-term climate indices it can make lightning. And so all of the hundreds of other correlations described in the literature really don't seem too difficult anymore. And of course, I might as well have tagged most of this morning's show onto last night's video. And if you didn't see it, an objective observer has to say climate science has collapsed. Every certainty is weakening. Bias and uncertainty are coming back to bite them. And just like when a mini version of the economic slowdown happened in 9-11, the planet does the opposite of what they think it should do in response to the COVID shutdown. We greatly appreciate your support. Again, last night's video is important. Watch it if you missed it. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.